Harley, and I'm from Purdue University, where I'm Associate Dean of International Programs and Director of Programs for Study Abroad. Purdue just finished the first one, which was summer 2011 in Costa Rica, and we had 23 students from all different disciplines from our undergraduate college participating. And so it was two weeks, largely in the San Jose area, but also outside. And it was a combination of lectures, museum tours, visits to the rainforest, um, getting acquainted with the history, culture, language, flora, fauna, food, dance, um, a lot of aspects of, of the culture. And it was as much as anything to give students their first intercultural, it ended up not being their first intercultural experience. A lot of students had traveled abroad, incidentally. Um, but to give them a sense of doing that together as a Purdue group, even though they're only newly at Purdue, barely at Purdue. And so I think bonding as a group and starting to think of themselves as those that would learn in the global context. One of the interests is to do something that's innovative for students early as what could be called an early intervention. And our goal was to try to grease the wheels a little bit because we hadn't done this before. So the administrative structures and all the mechanics of setting it up, we knew it could be a little clunky to start a new program because that just is the way it is with big complex organizations. So we wanted this to be a, a first trial run to get the kinks worked out of the system. And um, so, that, so that went well and it, we did it in-house. The leadership came exclusively from the study abroad office or from a close colleague from one of the other academic units, but it was less about his discipline and more about his Spanish skills and his former prowess with traveling in Costa Rica. At Purdue, we currently do not have a freshman, we don't have a freshman um, seminar. <clears throat> like Michigan State has a freshman seminar, has you know, dozens of choices. We don't have that, and we don't have a core curriculum either, so that it doesn't fit hand in glove with that. So it essentially became another option for a faculty-led program type um, situation just for students that hadn't started at Purdue yet. So we had to work with students that were prospective students to Purdue, who within that could be prospective study abroad students. But it's really a, an end in itself. Um, it, it gives students hopefully a, the impetus to think of themselves differently and start the transformation. And it may or may not lead toward a future study abroad program. We think it will, but it doesn't have to to be considered successful. We think that it's as much as anything to give students the chance to think differently and participate a little more differently with um, their classes once they get there as a real bona fide Purdue student. And also the bonding with others, which we heard significantly from students that making friends ended up being really important. And now they start Purdue, they start the fall, I should say, um, with essentially 20 friends. Students want it for the adventure, they want to bone up on their Spanish skills, uh, they've got the travel bug, they think it sounds exotic, they think study abroad is a good thing, and they're not necessarily differentiating with you know, what choices there are. I mean, I just got through saying there's one choice. But what I was hearing is when they would tell their story afterward, time and time again, they would say that the bonding with other students was really important. Now I have friends at Purdue, and that's really important as I start my Purdue career. So they might say, well, I, the most important thing is I learned Spanish. And then second, well, I made friends. Another person would say, well, I really always wanted to go to Costa Rica, and now I have. And I guess secondarily, I made some really good friendships. So this sort of secondary theme really prevailed as a common, a common theme that clearly had impact and had meaning to the students. Yes, we feel like it was successful, and we will plan to repeat that one with a few tweaks, but really not that much. And my sense is there will be at least one more, and I think it will be in Western Europe. And um, we're trying to take it easy and start small. Um, these are challenging times for other reasons, economic and leadership transition in some of our colleges and so forth, and that's... Um, and those cycles happen. And I, so I, I'm not sure that this is the right time to really roll out a whole lot of other ones, but we're really going to look for a more organic um, progression. Mm -hmm. So we're just talking to people as we can, finding where we have interested parties, and then really um, nurturing that interest. Uh, so it's not going to be a top-down initiative, but we're certainly eager to help when we hear of interest. Mm -hmm. the, I would say that the students really were a, a remarkable group. They were a self-selected group of high achieving students and I think that's not a coincidence. I mean the same students that are going to pay attention 
to the emails of an office inviting them to do something innovative like this are likely the same students that pay attention and do well, take advantage of their opportunities. It's not coincidental that they happen to be honors students. I mean, a third of them were honors students as it worked out. We didn't recruit for the honors program, but it's just it's those kind of students that found this offer to be appealing. Um, I think that's interesting. That should be interesting to universities to think about. This can draw the same kinds of students you really want to nurture to be successful. So you could potentially sniff out some of the most eager, ambitious learners because they would also, as a coincidence, pick this kind of program. So, especially for big universities where you may have less contact. So that was one observation. And the students had made such good choices. We didn't have issues um, after colleagues and others would tease us about what it's going to be like to take a group of 18-year-olds. Um, in my experience, we had few, so few problems, and um, it was one of the best groups I've ever helped lead.